Hey guys, how are you doing today? I am doing fantastic because I'm about to launch this amazing video. Now, for those of us who are on the journey to capturing our next crown, you might have the biggest stress about a pageant as I do. No, it's not swimsuit. No, it's not walking in heels. It's my hair. I don't know if you're in the same boat I am, but my hair is my biggest stressor when it comes to competing. And on top of that, when it comes to uh, going to appearances and anything else that it has to do with pageantry, I always feel like when my hair needs to be the biggest, it is absolutely a nightmare. So I don't know if you're in the same boat as me, but I set out to solve that problem for all of us. Now we're hoping to expand this tutorial to other hair types, but this is for hair types that are fine to thin hair. And again, you may or may not be able to apply it to you, but I know that Jackie, it would be honored to have you come in and get a one-on-one -on -one consultation to make sure we are giving you the right products for your next pageant. Okay, we're gonna start out the day of the pageant. You're gonna wanna wash your hair that morning and go into your styling. You wanna make sure that you actually really massage your scalp, even beforehand, before you have any shampoo, any conditioner, anything on it. That's gonna um, give your, your own natural oils to give you shine and keep everything healthy. And also, if you're too oily, you're gonna wanna really, really massage it because then the shampoo will help cleanse some of your natural oils out if you're too oily. Um, we're going to start the week before your pageant, you're going to do a clarifying shampoo because you guys put a lot of products in there and that creates buildup and then it doesn't curl well and then you have other problems. So we need to get all of that out. When you're doing that the week before, you have to, once you take all that stuff out, you have to put something good back in. So this is um, a deep penetrating reconstructor. So this fills in all those little holes with good stuff. Uh, but we're gonna, the day of the pageant, you're gonna clarify, use a clarifying shampoo. And I have Penra shampoo right here that's clarifying. Okay, when you're using, when you're, when you're shampooing your hair, you don't want, when you're in the shower, you immediately wanna put all of your shampoo right on the top of your head. This is what needs to be clarified first. This is what needs to be shampooed first. So start from your mids to your ends and really clarify this. Then you can go back into then doing your scalp. This has a really good smell. It smells like grapefruit and I love it. So it keeps everything nice and fresh all day. And you want to really, really scrub your scalp. When you go to the salon and you think, oh, this is so nice because they give me a scalp massage. It's not just because they want to make you feel great. It's because it's actually doing a purpose. We're gonna rinse really, really well. And you can even do that two times. You don't wanna use a clarifying shampoo every single day. That will dry out your hair and it will take too much of your natural oils and the good stuff away from it. So when you're doing conditioner, the same thing. Your natural oils of your hair will condition your scalp. You, are, you need to just condition from here all the way to your ends. Can always end with a cool rinse and that will close down your cuticle of your hair because it feels so good in the shower sometimes <laughs> but it hurts to be beautiful okay so when you are doing the deep penetrating conditioner you're gonna do that again the week before the pageant you're gonna put it up you can have you can get a shower cap you can save them from hotel rooms. Um, you can buy one from the from CVS. Um, if you do purchase one of our um, packages, then we'll have a couple of those in there for you. Um, and you're gonna leave this on for 20 minutes. You can also like vacuum or do something, and that will get your body heat up, and that will actually help it penetrate deeper inside the cuticle. But make sure you clarify before you use the deep penetrating conditioner. Okay, so this is the beginning of your prep after shampoo, of course. You're gonna make sure that you want to use a wide tooth comb to comb your hair when it's wet. They also have a couple brushes out there that are um, actually formulated and made to brush your hair when it's wet. Your hair is super fragile when it's wet, so you're not going to want to run a brush through it. You always want to use a comb. The first 
one of the first products that is going to be in the pageant prep is Moroccan oil. Um, it has a molecule that starts up 100% in the hair. So if you're thinking, I can't put oil on my hair, my hair's too oily, you don't have to worry about that because it is, it will not make your hair oily. It has no wax in it. Um, it doesn't sit on the surface of the hair. It actually penetrates into each follicle or each shaft. Um, and it will also help you comb it out because sometimes you uh, think, I have to brush my hair to comb it out. Well, you don't. This will definitely help it. If you have super, super fine hair or super light hair, Moroccan oil has also another formula that is it's Moroccan oil light. It's just not as heavy of an oil and it won't color you know, your blonde hair and it's a little bit lighter of a formula. You wanna keep that mid to end. Again, you have your own oil up here. You don't need to put any extra oil on top of it. Let your body do its own work. Okay, next we're going to start off with blow drying. Um, this is the pageant power. This is the next um, package of products that will really help you. Now mind you, you can use one of these, two of these, three of these, you do not have to use all of these, even if you can pick and choose them, but we can put, we have the package put together that if you really need the help in, in actually styling and blow drying, that's the good package for you. If you need finishing, then that's for you. Okay, so you're gonna start out with a root boost. This is by Moroccan Oil. I really, really like it because it, some of them are foam. And if your hair is fine um, or you don't have a lot of hair, it can weigh everything down and people always use too much. Moroccan oil is uh, a, just a really light liquid, so you're not going to have that problem. No matter what kind, and it's good for everything in the hair. So you're going to start out by, in this crown area of your head, how fitting crown, okay. You're going to, it doesn't have to be a perfect section, but you're going to kind of section off and I know it's gonna be hard for you to see, just imagine that you have a straight line in the back of your head and you're just gonna put one swipe and kinda of rub it in. Then go a little bit higher up, it smells awesome, rub it in. That kinda of looks like it's foam, but it's not, it's just liquid. You don't wanna to use too much of this, but probably about you know, five rows back here and then you're gonna put about three rows on each side of your head. But we'll do that next. Next thing is um, very, very important, this is a heat protectant. And we all know um, that we do tons of heat styling, even your blow dryer. People say, oh, well, I don't have to put it on because I'm just blow drying. Blow dryers get very, very hot. They used to never get hot, now you can get um, tools that get very hot. So no matter what, if you want to use anything else, this is your most important thing you can use. I like Joyco's Ironclad because it's super, super light. Some of um, some of other companies, they have them and they're just too heavy. You do not need very much of this. A little bit goes a long way. This can should last you a very long time. So you're just going to kind of lightly mist. Make sure you hit your ends a couple extra times. Again, you're gonna hit your right around your face where you're usually curling and curling and curling over and over, maybe that a little bit more, your ends a little bit more. But that's all that you need. If you put too much of this stuff on, you're gonna have to use a whole bunch of more products to get your hair back up. Okay, we're gonna start out with blow drying and we're gonna blow dry this back section. You wanna blow dry till it's about 60, 70% dry before you need to use a round brush or anything else. It's called just a rough dry. So you're gonna put this up, you, do, you can use high heat, the best is probably medium heat, um, and you wanna make sure you have this thing on your blow dryer. It's called a concentrator. Almost every blow dryer comes with it. Some of them come with diffusers and concentrators, but everyone throws these, throws these away. I don't know, these weird plastic things. I don't know where they are. Well, you gotta go, you can go to a beauty spot, you can go anywhere and try to find one. You have to measure the um, top of your blow dryer to make sure it fits. But you actually need this. Don't throw that away next time. Okay, 60 to 70% dry. We're going to now do each of the sides. I'll demonstrate on this side, and you're gonna actually do that to both sides. So you're gonna start with the root boost. Okay, it's a rough drive because she looks like she has been on a motorcycle. You should be able to, because you parted it, uh, it when it was wet, and if you followed the tutorial, it should go right back to the place that you originally um, had it. Now we're gonna move on to round brushing. 
Okay, this is called, um, obviously a round brush, but it's vented at the top. So what happens is the airflow goes all the way through. You can get this really, really hot, um, and it's not going to damage your hair, it's not gonna burn your hair. But you need to make sure that you could, this will come in the um, pageant power, the middle um, package, but you wanna make sure that you get one that's vented at the top if you um, go to find one on your own. So the best way to do it is probably section off from like your, the backs of your ears to the bottom or to the back of your head. Just clip that up nice and easy. Well, hold on. This shouldn't be that hard. She's got a lot of hair. It doesn't look like it, but she's got a lot of hair. Okay, so this is, you know, it's definitely about 70, probably 80% dry now. You're going to section off a piece like that here and pull up. We're focusing on the roots. That's why you want this concentrator. That concentrator is concentrating the air right where we want it. You can pull all the way down until the hair is dry. Okay, your next section, you're gonna go from the back of the ear, your ears all the way to the top. Now you have, this is your occipital bone. So you wanna make sure, and it doesn't have to be perfect, I'm trying to show you guys that when you're doing it, you don't have to find a perfect line. So I'm trying to do it as if you were doing it yourself, you wouldn't be able to see that you had a perfect line back here or perfect sectioning. So if you were doing it yourself and you couldn't see anything, that's about what it would look like and that's totally fine. When you're working with the front of your hair, because when you are on stage, you want your hair away from your face and you're gonna want it to have a lot of volume even on the sides. So you can pull this up, but you can also pull these out when you're blow drying. So on this top section, it's gonna be a little bit more important for you to use your concentrator. The reason that you use a round brush, this is actually metal right here. So this heats up, sorry, this heats up. So when this, when this is heating up, it's actually smoothing your hair at the same time. Why the reason you want a concentrator is you want to dry this hair so when it's actually dry, it it's, it's ends up drying here instead of down here. If you let your hair air dry, it just is really flat because it dried that way. So we wanna make sure that it dries up. And this is also, round brushing is, is getting everything, you know your each hair is gonna actually be dry and it's gonna be dried actually being up, not flat. Now that the hair is dry, we're going to section it. You want to take this top section, like back to your occipital bone, and this front area as one section. Your two sides, they look like little um, triangles, and then your back section. Then you're going to take each section as you go, and now we're going to set the hair um, with, the, with a curling iron and some clips. Okay, we're going to start with, before we set, this is a buildable hairspray. Um, if you notice, let me show you actually in the camera, um, a lot of companies will have numbers on them. This has 12. So the lower number, the less hold. The higher number, the higher hold. So a 12, um, is, this is from Redken, so you can use it multiple, multiple times. So it's a buildable hairspray. Um, if you start out with a 32, which is what our finishing spray is, you will have a huge, like, crusty curl that you're not gonna be able to brush out and that won't be good. So pay attention to your numbers on it. So um, on each section that you do, because we have it sectioned off, you're going to, this is just, that's all you need, just a little bit, and then you can keep 
more and more and more. Keep building if you like. And now we're gonna start the um, setting process. We're going to use, these are um, actually by a company called Diva Curl. Um, and what happens is when you curl your hair, it heats it up. When you heat it up, then you, if you were just to let it down and not clip it up, it cools being down. That closes off the cuticle after it cools and that's where it stays. We want our hair to be up and large. So we need to have it curled. It needs to cool when it's actually still in the curl. Um, and that way your curls will stay and it'll, you'll have lots of volume. Okay, um, some people curl hair, they put their curling iron and they go all the way to the end and they roll it up. That is not the way to do it. Um, up to the front, up to the um, root here, you're, that's where you're gonna start. You're gonna turn and hold. This is the, will be the most damaged hair. You do not have to have a lot of heat on that. Just a little bit, that will um, do the trick. Once it's um, heated up, you're gonna put one of your clips nice and easy in there. And it's okay that it's just nice and loose. Okay, we drop down another section here, and we're gonna do the same thing all the way around. Um, you need to pay attention to your curling iron temperature. Um, they, they can go up to 550 degrees. Think about cooking a frozen pizza. And each one of your hairs are very, very small, and you don't need to cook them like a pizza. You think the hotter the better, that's not necessarily the case. We did do a heat protectant, so that's always good. Um, but you only need to start out with it half, halfway. You know, around 200, maybe 250 degrees. Um, you really never wanna go above 300, you don't need to. Especially if you have protein back in your hair, it should curl the way that you want it to curl. And to get these, to get the bigger waves, uh, we want these, the underneath to be a little bit tighter. Your top curl will be a little more loose, but you want to kind of keep these a little tighter. I like to use a one and a quarter inch curling iron. Uh, it's my favorite for pageant hair. It just, it works well. It's not too tight, it's not too loose. You're not gonna look like you got an 80s perm, but it is tight enough that it will last. So it won't actually be a one and a quarter inch because you're, you're gonna brush them out, but they will last. The other thing is, uh, the kind of curling iron. Um, they have tourmaline, ceramic, metal. If you're buying a professional iron, um, you can, you want it to go up above 250 degrees, for sure. And I would say that ceramic is probably your best bet. Uh, they have the titanium right now, that's super in. Some of those get really, really hot, so you just have to be careful. The finer the hair, the less the heat that you need. So if you need some, if you have really, really thick hair, you're gonna wanna go with something that's more titanium or tourmaline. So many pageants people, as I refer to you guys as, will use roller sets. So, and hot rollers. Hot rollers, basically this is what you're doing. You're doing the same thing with a hot roller. The problem with the hot, hot roller, the sets, they come in, there's uh, four small, four medium, and a couple largest. To get a constant, you can do whatever size curl that you want, even with a one and a quarter inch curling iron. You don't need to have 15 different barrels to do this. So I think that it's completely fine if you wanna set some of your hair and go to rehearsal and do whatever you have to do. But it's, I feel that it may just be a little wasted time and it, it, it makes each curl a different size. If you're not placing the right curls in the right places, you're going to have a problem. If you roll one the wrong way, it doesn't wanna go back to the way that you actually need it to be. So sometimes it can be a little bit detrimental for you. Okay, so when we're doing the front of the face, we curled all of this section down and back. We want this to go out and back. As you guys know, in pageantry, your face is the focus, not necessarily your hair, your hair needs to be away from your face. So, but we still wanna get a lot of volume there. And we don't want you touching your face. If you have all of the curl going one way, you'll just have one big curl if you curl it all the same direction. And if you curl everything towards your face, it's gonna be sticking on your lips and everything else. And then we get in a pickle. So you're gonna take this, again, you're not going to start at the ends. This hair has been damaged and um, this hair is the strongest hair, so that needs the most heat. The ends don't need nearly as much heat. Pull it out and roll a little bit. The end is still out. Pull it out. Put it up. 
add your clip. This, you're going to away from the face. We're rolling this backwards. Again, your ends are out. Here, you can hold your end so you can make, if you want to, if that's more comfortable. And this takes practice. So don't just think that it's gonna be perfect on the first try. It definitely takes practice. Okay, so everyone, this is Elena, and she is a professional stylist. She works here at Karma. She's very, very talented. So, um, but she's just gonna show you how she would do it if she was doing it to curling her hair herself. So don't be alarmed because she's fast and perfect, but it took her practice too. You want to make sure when you're setting that your, your curls, this section is all going down and back. The two sides of your face is going back here, and then this section, you're going up and back. Uh, and then you're gonna clip from the back side. So you, if you're comfortable wearing this to rehearsal, that's probably your best bet, just like people wear roller sets and everything else, because you want to, by the time you get back and you are able uh, to actually start styling your hair and teasing it and getting it up, it's better to have it where it is now instead of taking it all out and then coming back from rehearsal and trying to get it all back up. Okay, so when we're all done, your set is all the way up, and it's okay if it's not perfect. That's completely fine. You're gonna do a nice spray with the 12 or the billable hairspray. Make sure you get kind of in between. So your set should stay in um, until the hair is actually cool. Probably no more than 20 minutes is needed, but you can keep it in for longer. The other thing is that you also can use this dry texture spray. I know that Elena's hair curls well because I've seen it curled a million times. So if your hair uh, does not curl well, this is actually in one of the packs. It's a dry texture spray. You don't need much of it, but what it basically does is gives your hair a little bit of grit. So the curling, when your curling iron has something to grab onto. So when your hair is all dry before you even start curling, you're going to take this. It's a, it's a, it's a powder that. It's a powder that kind of sprays out. It smells really, really good, but it is pretty light, but you don't want to overuse. So you're just going to uh, go through one time just to give that a little bit of grit so the curl will hold better. So we're gonna take the set down, super easy. Just take these out. You don't have to be super careful about anything besides pulling your client's hair out. <laughs> So after we took the curls down, we're gonna start teasing and getting everything pumped up. The reason that I, the misconception is some the, that pageants that you're supposed to tease before you curl. The problem is when you tease, you can get a big tease here, a little tease here, and, and what happens is you start to look, we don't wanna look like your head is deformed. So if you do this and then the curls, you want your curls first and then you, can, you know what sides, what places that you need things to get bigger. You need to have control over it. If you tease everything before and then put up your curls, you have no control over whatsoever what it's gonna look like in the end and you're gonna be combing some of it out. So the best bet is just to curl first, everything's all set, looks nice, and then we'll move on from there. So in one of our packs, you have this, and I actually, we use this um, when we're styling and when we're coloring as a foiling comb um, when you put foils in your hair. But it's one of the best things because if you look at the teeth on this comb, they're very, very fine. And that's gonna be one of the best teasing, teasing combs. They have all of these other brushes out there. They have 500 little bristles. You don't need that. You can use a very, you just need a very, very fine comb. People have been teasing their hair for so many years, and I can tell you probably 30 years ago, they had their hair way bigger than people get their hair now, and they didn't have all of these fancy things. You just need a really fine tooth comb. 
the, the tail on this is good so when you're teasing you can lift everything up. Um, one of my favorite things to use is it's called Powder Play by Big Sexy Hair and it is actually a powder that turns into kind of um, a paste which will keep it up for the long haul. So what you're going to want to do first is you're going to take this crown area again kind of and put this up because we're going to start right here. Your occipital bone is this your, your bump right here that you have. So a little bit above the occipital bone. Everyone's is in a different place. So find yours and then you know what it is. So right above that And you can start, if your hair is really flat in the back, you can tease that. You really, it's gonna be how big, how you want your shape to be. And a reminder, biggest thing, we I did not even finger comb through these curls yet. We will have lots of time to do that at the end. You do not, you want these to stay as fresh and as nice as they are right now. You'll have plenty of time to comb them out. So you're gonna take this, you really can't use too much of this because if you can use too much if you were just doing a day styling, something for the day and you use too much of it. But in the pageant world, you can't use too much of it. So this is also good to, for sectioning when you're trying to teach. So what I'm gonna do back here is I'm gonna just take a fine line and you'll get a nice straight line there. You're gonna take a little bit lower than your mid section up here and you're gonna pull it down. Regrip, pull it down. Okay, we're packing this in here. If your tease never stays and you just think why it will never stay, it always falls. After you've done this teasing, and I know it looks like a rat's nest, that's what you want. You're gonna spray it with that buildable hairspray. Let it dry a little bit. You can take your curling iron that's still hot. That baby's not moving. So you're gonna move up. This is your top section, and we start at the occipital. We're gonna do your next section. Okay, so we have teased from the occipital bone, which is the bump in the back, um, all the way up into the very um, edge of the crown. So when you're coming in the front area here, you can do the, the bottom, Tease. Let me use a little bit. Put that in there. Spray. Okay, so when we're coming up to this section, because her part is on this side, so we need to again keep everything away from the face. You're gonna take your next section, not your crown area section, just this next section, and you're gonna do this one going up and down. You're gonna take this out. some hair out from your hairline because you don't want this part of your hair showing you don't want the tease part that's just your natural beauty this so you're gonna leave a little bit of it out to cover it up this is the area that you're gonna tease then you will have your natural hair will cover over it then we'll move on in one second to the crown area and that's the most important part Okay, so your very top is your crown area. You're gonna take it out. Remember, this part should still be there. You're gonna take about an inch from where the part is on each side. This is the part that you're not going to tease. You need something to cover it up. So here is her part. We're gonna take, excuse me, about an inch of this side, about an inch of this side, and a little half moon right here. This is the hair that's gonna cover up all the teasing that's not gonna be super pretty. Kinda of roll that up in a curl and give it a clip. They're, now we're ready to tease this section. 
the same way that you did before. We're gonna go midsection. If you're having a hard time and you're just like, it's not teasing, take half the amount of hair. Half the amount of hair that you have, you can always do it in smaller sections. Then you can take it down. Now that I've teased the hair all the way up until just not this section and not the section around the face, you're going to pull down that last section, find that part again. So you're still going to want to use the product right here. You're just not going to tease as much. You only need a little bit of hair to cover up your teasing. in those spots you might have taken too much hair out and then you're gonna want to smooth push up like this smooth it down you want to make sure that this is nice and smooth and you don't want to look like your head is deformed so you can look in the mirror and you can see I have a flat spot here I have a you know this spot here This is where this comes into play. If you feel like this needs to go up, this is a perfect. You can kind of just push this. This gets inside your teasing and kind of can get you to where you want to be. The ultra fine teeth on this comb can really help smooth everything down too. Smooth over. tell if you tease too much in the place. So now this bang area, you can comb out a little bit up here. Okay, so when you have the shape that you want, you definitely don't want a square head, but you don't want a cone head either. So you want a, a nice and round, nice and rounded head. Um, here, make sure that your bang is staying off your face. If it's not working, you can just go and retexturize it with an iron, or you know when you're hold when you hold it up, hold it up and let it dry for a little bit up front, so it doesn't set. If you're having a problem with some pieces that are too frizzy, spray a little bit of texture spray on. You can grab one hair, one curl, and get exactly what you need. Next, humidity blacker. Super easy. You're gonna spray it all over. Not too much. That will actually block the humidity. If you're doing things and you have a couple things going on and you have to go to four different events before you actually get to go on stage, that's the perfect thing. Then 32. This is level 32 red kit. So there you have it. I hope this answered a lot of questions for you. I know it did for me, and I can probably uh, name a handful of things that I was doing wrong, and product is the biggest one for me. I was the one that was putting more and more product on my hair, and I couldn't keep a curl, and then I looked like a wet dog, and I know now with Jackie's help that I'm going to be ready for my next pageant. I'm going to practice beforehand, but she has made it foolproof. Thank you so much for watching. And hey, drop a line below if you want a different video, something maybe you want us to cover to help you on your journey to capture your crown.